what's up everyone sam shaw here founder of wall street mastermind i am back today with another client interview for you guys uh really excited to have caduce on with me today um caduce is actually one of our uh mba clients um because we work with a lot of college students but we've also worked with some mbas and he's one of our mba clients who uh just finished going through the uh I guess, full-time recruiting process. I almost said summer associate, but actually just finished going through the full-time <laughs> associate recruiting process Yeah, and uh, and was able to get a successful outcome. So I wanted to get him on here to uh, talk to you guys and just kind of share his experience and maybe even give you guys some tips and tricks that he used to help him secure the job. So Caduce, thank you so much for uh, taking the time to talk to us today. Yeah, thank, thanks for having me, Sam. Absolutely. Me. So... I guess, uh, you know, to start, um, if you could just maybe introduce yourself a little bit so people kind of get a sense for who you are. Yeah, so I'm Kaduz. Um, I was born and raised in Lagos, Nigeria. Uh, moved here in uh, 2009 during the financial crisis, actually, uh, to start college. Uh, I went to school in New York, one of the city university schools of New York, uh, for my bachelor's degree in accounting. Uh, I finished that. I, I also played collegiate soccer during my time there. And uh, right when I, after I finished, I focused on my CPA. Uh, I got my CPA done and I got the opportunity to join JP Morgan uh, in the private equity and real estate space. Uh, I was specifically focusing on private equity accounting. Um, and while I was working with JP Morgan, I did my first master's as well, like a night school. So I worked with JP Morgan for about three years, um, worked with a lot of financial sponsors, helping them with their investor reporting. And uh, after some time, I felt like I wanted something more. So I decided to pursue other opportunities and something opened up at Goldman Sachs, where I became a controller on some of the Goldman Sachs private equity funds. Uh, it was great exposure. And that was really where everything kind of like opened up to me. You know, the fact that I was working with investment, uh, professionals, uh, you know, who made decisions on investment for each of these Goldman funds, uh, just kind of like opened my eye to, oh, how, how are they able to do that? You know, like look at a, a portfolio company and be able to like tell that they will perform, you know, in a few, in the near coming future and also make, they'll use that to make money for the investors. Yeah. Uh, so, so, so I, it kind of caught my interest, you know, just being exposed to them. And after about two and a half years, I started thinking, okay, you know what, I think I want to go into the investment side. And then, you know, I kind of figured banking was the way to do it. I spoke to some people at Goldman Sachs who were in banking and they encouraged me to pursue it. Like, hey, if you want to go, if you want to do it, you have a great foundation to go after it and just go after it. Got so it. that was how I ended up at my MBA uh, in, at USC Marshall now. Got it. Okay. So now you've been at USC Marshall for, uh, you just finished your, well, actually you finished your summer internship just now. So you're in between yep. your first and second, or rather as of this recording, you just started your second year in business school. Yeah, this right? week. Um, we actually started working together, I think just a little over a year ago, like July between, uh, July before you start your business school, right? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Definitely. Um, so like, let's go back to the beginning. Yeah. Right. Um, you decided to go to business school with the intention of using that as the, Avenue. Um, yeah. as the transition to switch career tracks, basically to go from being an accountant to being an investment banker. And obviously business school is really good for that, right? Yep. Um, what was it that made you want to join something like Wall Street Mastermind in addition to just going to business school? Because I think like, that's one of the questions that I think we get a lot from MBA students is like, why do I need Wall Street Mastermind if I already have business school or yep. I already have career services on campus? I'm already paying so much money to go to business school. You probably had some of the same questions back then, if yeah. I remember correctly. So like, what was your thought process there? Yeah, so the thing was for me is like, uh, you know, I'm I am basically leaving like a, a position that was almost like very comfortable for me, 
Like I didn't have to go to business school. I could have just stayed as a controller at Goldman and try to move up from there. Yeah. But I just happened to be someone that wanted to like kind of keep my mind stimulated and learning new things. And 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 that was one one of like the catalysts for me saying, you know what, I want to do something else and go for it. And for me to do that, I wanted to make sure I'm making the right decision and I'm making like the I'm putting in every effort to make sure it happens, right? So when I got up, uh, accepted by uh, USC, I actually got accepted by other schools in the East Coast, but USC kind of called me last minute and they gave me like a scholarship. So that was really how they got me. Mm-hmm. Um, then I started like plotting, like, okay, now I got into school. How do I best position myself, right? So I went and started looking at students from USC. Uh, I saw a girl on LinkedIn, I reached out to her. She had just graduated. And I told her, hey, I just got accepted to the school. This is my interest. Um, you know, I just want to know what, what the banking recruiting, it's like a USC. Then she told me about someone who went through the banking um, prep and also got into the banking. Um, I forgot his name now. Is it is at Barclays? I think it uh um, Paolo. Paolo, yeah, Paolo. I haven't spoken to him in a while. That's all <laughs> Paolo. Then she told me about Paolo and I looked up Paolo and I looked up his name and I saw that he had an interview online oh. with one of this MBA kind of like programs that kind of like encourage people to get into school. And oh. I read everything he said and I, I saw Wall Street Mastermind as a as the as what really prepped him for his banking. Uh, scholarship and I was then I said oh I gotta speak to Paolo about you know the whole process then Paolo was the one that kind of told me hey this is this is what I was going through when I was doing the interview you know I felt like I know the stuff but I just wasn't getting through getting across to like the interviewers and he started panicking at some point if he's going to get an offer or not and you know he was able to get Wall Street Mastermind with Sam and it and it just happened right after that you know, after after doing the program and doing it, you know, kind of like following the steps that you kind of like get uh, the guides that you gave him. So then he introduced me to Sam and, you know, I spoke to Sam. I, I still remember the first interview we had where Sam was like, oh, what do you what kind of accounting do you do? You know, at Goldman. And you were asking me the questions like, oh, if something happens, uh, if the, an accounting event happens, you know, how does it affect, you know, all the three, the three you know, statements? statements. Yeah. And, you know, being an accountant, all I was thinking about, oh, you debit this, you credit this. <laughs> and that was, that was the way I was answering. And I remember you told me, well, for banking, that's not the way they want to hear it, right? Okay. Then you kind of like answered that question yourself. Then it kind of made sense to me, like, huh, I see, I see what you meant. Yeah. And I kind of like saw the difference of like me just going and code into like all these banking interviews and talking and even in the network networking phase uh you know i kind of like saw the danger of me just going cold and just getting shut out you know uh, of the whole process so yeah. uh so 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 that so immediately i kind of like saw like okay i think there's something here that will actually benefit me yeah. you know and that was why i started seeking to see okay should i do wall street mastermind i think and remember, if you remember very well, I was like kind of going back and forth. Like yeah. ah, my friends are telling me you could do this yourself, man. And I was like, hey, why do I need? Why do you need to do a program like that? Like a bunch of people get it themselves. But um, you know, after speaking to Sam and spoke to Paolo again, I was convinced. You know, and you know, it's, it's, I remember you showed me the demo of how you know you kind of like do the lectures. And you know, kind of teach people how to like answer the questions and things like that. Yeah. Then I just decided, like, you know what? If I'm going to, you know, go for banking and I'm going to basically pull all the possible resources I have to be able to get there, it's better I do this, you know. And you know, I did it, joined Wall Street Mastermind, even though at the time I joined, it was like almost bad timing for me because that was when school um, school started. Yeah. Yeah. And so I couldn't like focus on the program mm. at that time because they would just kept loading us up in the front in front. And I was like, when will I ever get to, you know, do like the models and things like that? So um I remember getting some diversity interviews really early. Yeah. As well. So I had to like try to use the 400 questions to try to like prepare for those really quick. But mm. But um, but those interviews didn't work out, and it wasn't because I didn't know the stuff. 
it was just the way I think my the, the way I was answering the question probably wasn't resonating with the bankers I was talking to. Yeah. You know, and there were people in my college who actually knew I knew the stuff and they're like, wait, why aren't you getting the offer? Because you don't want to explain all this stuff to us. You get me? <laughs> uh, yeah. And, and it's it, it so it, it just happened so funny. Um, then I think when the December phase came, yeah, it was also like a weird time because at that time I was pursuing banking because I'm on the West Coast. I was trying to pursue banking in the East Coast. Mm-hmm. And I didn't realize how much having an alumni, you know, on, on one region of the country actually helps. Mm-hmm. So I never focused on the West Coast. So that kind of like delayed the whole process for me. Like, cause I couldn't, I was trying to get interviews in the East Coast. I couldn't get, I, I didn't really get interviews there. I got one interview from LA. I got one from San Francisco and mm-hmm. I felt like they weren't enough for me to actually get that rep before, you know, I actually get you know, a good interview where I will actually be able to get the position. And it just didn't happen in December. Yeah. And then I said, you know what? I need to go back to Sam's model <laughs> and see what is it I've been, I haven't been doing well. And mm-hmm. I remember we, me and you spoke again and you're like, oh, have you gone through this? Have you gone through that? Yeah. Especially the behavioral part yeah. of the interviews. I was like, I didn't go deep into the behavior. I just focused on the technical. Remember, that was what I was telling you. And you kind of like did a session with me. Yeah. Like, okay, let's talk about the behavior. How, you ask, how you're answering the questions. Then as soon as we had that session, you were able to like point out, okay, this is what you're not doing right. If you look at the model, you, you'll see how I explained, you know, using the three, the three points. Like you have three main points for almost every question. Yeah. And you kind of like answer it with the, uh, with the Spark formula. Yeah. Yeah. And they, yeah, and I remember when we had that session that day, it was kind of overwhelming at first because I'm used to like just doing the interviews the way I like doing it. Yeah. Then there was a time I just sat down and I started like just typing everything out myself. Like, okay, let me just type it out using the same, for, you know, using that spark formula yeah. to like get everything actually stated. And I can actually read it myself and see if it makes sense to me. Yeah. And do, And the moment I started doing that, I was like, wow, this makes sense. And I see how I could have answered questions before better by using this formula. Yeah. Yeah. And I wouldn't lie to you, every interview I had after that is either they would wait less than me because some people didn't accept the offer yet yeah. because it was a late process or I actually got an offer. So I got an offer for like a corporate development um, uh, firm in San Francisco. I got, then I got the offer for private equity straight you know straight from for 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 uh for the summer just straight out of the mba yeah. uh, given that i have a private equity background from the accounting side so they said oh you really understanding technical we feel like we can just train you on certain things and you'll yeah. be able to do the job during the summer yeah so yeah right after that when i was able to like get that formula in my head on my by myself i was like okay now it makes sense yeah. i can answer any question and Recently, I had the interview with uh, Guggenheim for a full-time position. Yeah. And I you remember I was telling you that I really did not even pick up any prep material for the interview. Mm-hmm. And I was sure of myself to just go into the interview and, and actually perform. Mm-hmm. And they get, the, the MD called me the, the same day and told me, hey, we want to give you the offer. Yeah. And, and they sent me the offer the same day I had the interview. That's awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Um, there's a lot to unpack there. That was yeah. a great overview. So thank you for sharing that. Um, but, you know, first of all, I'm so glad that Paolo kind of introduced you to us because Paolo's another one of our <laughs> really awesome um, USC MBA clients where yeah. you're right. He first tried to recruit on his own because same thing. People told him, hey, you should be able to do this on your own, blah, blah, blah. And also I get it. Like when you pay so much money to go to business school, you expect that that should be everything you need. Right. Um, But he recruited until I think he didn't join Wall Street Management until like maybe November of his first year in business school. And at that point, like a lot of the banks had started to give out offers. He wasn't getting any offers. And that's when he was kind of freaked out and he came to us and then we got him, we helped him really quickly and then got him to offer at um, RBC RBC actually in the summer it was like just in the nick of time before summer associate recruiting finished. 
And then after he did a summer at RBC, he then recruited for full time with Barclays and then he got to Barclays and that's kind of where he is now. Right. Yeah. But for you, same thing, like obviously a lot of people telling you, Hey, you should be able to do this on your own. And obviously I'm not here to say that someone couldn't do this on their own. Like yeah. I think anything's possible. Right. I think it seems like the way that you thought about it is just that sure you could do it on your own maybe, but it's just comes down to probability, right? Like, how certain do you want to be that you're putting your best foot forward? Because there are people at USC or at other business schools, really good business schools who try to apply for investment banking, or maybe they're even going to business school with the intention for the sole purpose of getting yep. into investment banking. And then they recruit and then they end up not getting in. Yep. Right. But if that were to happen, then you think about all the time and money that you already invested just to go back to business school. It's like two years of your life. Um, I mean, you got a scholarship, but like for people that don't get scholarships, I mean, two years of business school could cost over $200,000 yeah. and you're giving up what was probably a six figure job yep. at Goldman. So there's an opportunity cost of not making money. It's like, it's such a big investment to go to business school in the first place that it just doesn't make sense to not do everything within your power, yep. to make sure that that investment pays off, right? Yeah, and we look great. at the other side of that investment, we look at what's the ROI if you were able to get into banking. I mean, like, I don't even know, with all the, all the investment banks increasing their pay recently, like, what is the new associate pay nowadays? I don't even know what it is. Like, it's like 175, 180. For the I base hour. Early. Right. Yeah. On base. Yeah. Evercore just increased yes to 185, I think. Wow. Yep. And that's base salary. And then your bonus is usually, I don't know what, even what percent, but usually I've seen like anywhere from 75 to a hundred percent of your base salary, depending on where you go. Yep. Right. Yep. So, I mean, if you're looking at those numbers, like if you can get into banking yep. your first year out of, business school as an associate you could be making 250 300k maybe even right it's not far-fetched yep. and so it's just that is such a big difference from i don't know if you graduate business school and go into just a normal finance job yep. or like going back into accounting or almost any other role is probably yep. only going to pay like half that right? <laughs> exactly. so and so that's that's i think what people don't realize is like look some business schools have really, really good career services. Yeah. Some business schools, they're, if we're being completely honest, the career services aren't as good. Yeah. I don't know which one is which for your school, but you also have to understand, like, who's your competition? It's all your classmates at school, right? Yeah, exactly. Everyone's using career services, right? Mm -hmm. So, like, what's the competitive advantage there? There is none, really, right? And you can never, in my opinion, at least, and I don't know if you agree with this, but for something as selective as investment banking, when there's so much on the line, there's really no such thing as having too much help. Yep. Right? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. There's no such thing. Yeah. Um, so I think, obviously, I, I remember we had a pretty long back and forth and yep. you were kind of on the fence and eventually you came in. And it sounds like after you came into the program, though, just like got so busy with school, didn't really go through like the material in the program, maybe even use some of the other resources that most people are using, like breaking Wall Street and things like that. Um, didn't quite get the results you were looking for. Yeah. Um, which is a bummer, but it sounds like once you actually took the time to go back and dig into the stuff that we were teaching you. Yeah then you started getting results, right? It's just like, if only you had done it earlier. Yeah, exactly. Then you would have gotten the summer associate internship that you wanted. Um, but like, what do you think it is that's, like what was so different about what we try to teach you in our modules versus say like what you could just read in an interview guide? Because I think from the outside looking in, yeah, most people when they're trying to visualize it, they would think like, it's got to be pretty similar, mm -hmm. right? So, like, why is this? Why, why, why do you get such different results? Yeah. So, 
like uh, if you look at it right so everyone everyone like um uh, like let's say like the 400 questions for example it's available to everyone right right everyone has it so if everyone has it why can't everyone get in right there's there's a differentiating factor there you know it's it's not just understanding the material right it's like are you able to like convey you know what you're actually reading and yeah. do you understand it in a deep sense and uh, i think that was where i kind of like saw like okay I know I understand the stuff. I'm a CPA. It's so easy for me to get the technicals. Right. Um, I understood it. I was actually teaching it to people that had banking interviews. But sorry, that had banking offers already. <laughs> like they had banking offers. I was teaching them the stuff in class yeah. and everything. And and to, in my head, I'd be think I, I used to think like, wait, how, how, how did they even get the offer? <laughs> <laughs> and I was the one teaching them, and I don't have the offer. And yeah. I think what the differentiating factor is like, you know, how you kind of like laid it out, you and the other guys that, you know, that are in the program, it's like, okay, this is how you answer the question, right? Yeah, you know, what's a DCF? Yeah, we know it's, uh, you know, it's, it's the calculation of a company's, you know, future cash flow and bring it to the present value, right? Yeah. But not just saying that, you kind of want to like say it in a way that you can't, you understand it. So when you ask me about a DCF now, I will, I will literally tell you a story, like, you know, a company has to make money. Yeah. If you want to buy a company, you have to, one thing you have to look for is like, okay, what's, what's the future cash flow? You know, how much would they make in, you know, a certain amount of period, right? And, you know, a dollar today is not a dollar tomorrow, right? So that, that, that means you have to kind of use a discount rate to bring that value yeah. to what we should pay for it today. And, you know, and we also have to look beyond what we are valuing, right? If, a, if we are valuing a company for like five years, for example, yeah. Um, we don't expect the company to end in five years, right? Mm -hmm. They're still gonna, they're still gonna, we, we assume they're still gonna be operating after that, but right. we can't make too much assumptions in that sense. So we have to, you know, use the terminal value to, you know, to kind of like account for, for, for beyond that five years and bring those together to basically come to like, you know, what the value uh, or the enterprise value of a firm will be. Right. If you asked me that question before, I'll probably just be giving you the actual calculations. Mm. But that's how I'll answer it. Like, hey, you know, you, you, you calculate this year like this, you just do a present value when yeah. you get to five years. I would not be able, I, I didn't know that I could just tell a story with it. Yeah. And it made more sense that way, you know, and every other person will probably answer it, you know, the way I would have answered it like earlier, yeah. you know, in the process and things like that. So, so, so that's what one thing what Wall Street Mastermind was able to like do for me. It's like, you, once you understand the stuff, it's like when you, when you tell the story, the person asking the question know that you actually understand it deeply, and you're not just memorizing it. Right. You get me, and, and that was that was what what really differentiated it for me. You know. Yeah. Instead of just reciting the formula for a DCF or yeah. for WAC or for CAPM or whatever. Yeah. You're actually explaining it in layman's terms, almost like so a six could even understand it and like if you can get to that level yeah then that's when you can get to like a really good answer like the type of answer that they're looking for looking for I, I should mention sam like last week someone texted me about having a diversity interview he just applied he has never done accounting finance he's an engineer healthcare he goes to cornell right now and he just i have a friend that just started on cornell so she told me that, oh, someone just got an interview and he has it on Thursday. So I think he got the notification on Sunday yeah. and he has the interview last Thursday. Yeah. And he has never opened. He doesn't really know the stuff yet. And can you talk to him? I said, let me talk to him. Yeah. I trained him on the stuff. I, I told him, look, whatever you think you've read, I'll, you know, it's good. But let me just put it to you this way. Repeat the way I'm saying it. And I want you to write it. Yeah. And I, I was just explaining the way I explained the DCF to you now, for example, right? Yeah. That was how I explained it to him. Yeah. And it made sense to him. It didn't have to be technical. It just made sense how it works right. to him. And he, he, he will be able to tell that story because early in the diversity uh, kind of phase, they will not go deep asking you about every single niche, every single like, you know, part of like a DCF, for example. Right. They want to know that you just understand what a DCF is doing. Yeah. And I told him how to tell the story. I told him how to also tell the story of the uh, comparables and the public comms. Yeah. And yesterday he hit me up that he got the offer. Wow. 
yeah and and that's just a testament to what what i told you i kind of like know this in the way they answer the question it's like yeah. if you can tell a story with it yeah they'll really not want to come back to you with like harder questions because yeah. they know you get it conceptually that, that's that's awesome and, and i think that you bring up another really good point which is like the best way to really know if you are at the level that you need to be at in terms of your understanding is can you teach this stuff to someone else who knows nothing about this yeah. right if you get to the level where you can actually teach this stuff then it's not even about memorization or whatever anymore that means you internalize this concept and they can ask you whatever questions they want about the yeah. pcf or about whatever other concept and you're going to be able to think on your feet and adapt and just doesn't matter what curveball uh, what curveballs they throw that's at right. exactly right. exactly and that's what that's the difference between like just reading the 400 questions it's like yeah it explains it to you but how will you actually convey that message right right and then exactly. most people when they read the 400 questions they just try to memorize the answers exactly verbatim but it's like you're not going to get asked the exact same questions exactly straight out of the guys because the interviewers right. know to not do that because they know everyone's already memorizing those answers answers exactly yeah because i remember when i interviewed with goldman remember, imagine i was from goldman i thought i was going to get in easy yeah. and the director i was that was interviewing me just asked me about dcf i just told him what you know how it kind of works uh and this was like early the early phase and he then asked me, oh, what happens if tax goes up or down? Mm -hmm. And I've actually never really <laughs> thought of that conceptually. Like, right. it just never came up. Like, and I was just wondering, I was just thinking, okay, if tax goes up, what does it affect? Right. <laughs> the, you know, the discount rate or things like that. Like, I, it, it just threw everything I knew off because it was almost like I was memorizing. Right. And you didn't memorize that question specifically. Exactly. And now you're getting frazzled because you're like, oh, crap. Like, I don't know how to answer this question. Exactly. So 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 when I when I kind of like just, you know, step back and say, OK, let, I went through the program and I'm just hearing the way you were answering it. And also, you know, like you also had the um, the session where you actually answer questions, someone asks you the questions, and I'm listening to the way you're answering. I'm like, wait, this makes so much sense. <laughs> like, like, this is how you're supposed to answer the question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and I would the put... mock interviews, the mock interviews that I did were yeah, exactly. I was, yeah, I that's what I'm referring to. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That I was like, wait, I, I like the way Sam is actually answering the questions. <laughs> like, it does make sense because yeah. I understood, I understood the technical already. Yeah. It was just the way you actually convey. Yeah. Okay, this is how you actually answer it. Yeah. Is is what really clicked with me at some point. So I will actually listen to your mock interviews. Yeah, like I will listen to it repeatedly, and I'll be answering the question myself. Yeah, when, whenever the person asks the question, like, okay, yeah, I know what Sam is gonna say. This right. is what's gonna happen, right. and everything just kind of like just stuck to me. You know, and I could bring it out anywhere and you can stop me in the middle of the street right now and ask me certain questions and I'll be able to like kind of answer <laughs> it the exact same way. No, that's 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 a really good point, which is look, understanding the concepts is yep. just like the first step, right? Yep. And that's not rocket science, but two different people with the exact same understanding can have totally different deliveries. And when it comes to an interviewing, it's all about the delivery. It's not just what you're saying. Yep. It's also how you're saying it, right? Exactly. Can you deliver your answer in a concise and easy to understand manner that's compelling to the interviewer? And if you can, then that makes a huge difference, right? Exactly. And especially as, as an associate in investment banking, which is kind of like a partner track position where eventually they're hoping that they can groom you into becoming a senior banker and put you yep. in front of clients and like communication skills is one of the most important things that they're looking for, mm -hmm. right? And so if you can't articulate these concepts in a way that's easy to understand, then you're probably not going to make the cut, right? Exactly. Um, but I think the other thing that I want to kind of touch on too from what you said is just that, um, I mean, obviously, even though the content in our program is great, but it's still not going to do anything for you if you don't actually do the work. Right? Yeah, definitely. Because, because like, I, I don't want people to get the wrong idea where they say, oh, well, so like, if I just join Wall Street Mastermind, then like, 
the offer is just going to fall into my lap. Like no, it didn't, no, that didn't like happen that. for you. Right. It's just not like, like that. <laughs> it's like, you still got to do the words. Like you just like, you're a soccer player. You have a coach for your team, but the coach can't play the game for you. Yeah. You just got to show up. You got to practice. You got to do the drills and then you got to, you know, go out there, step onto the field and you still got to score the goal. Yeah. No one can do that for you, but having a coach still makes a big difference because if you have a good coach, hmm. they can show you what to do and they can prepare you the right way and they can give you the best strategies and the best game plan as opposed to you trying to figure out how to win this game on your own. On your own, exactly. That's true. That's a fact. Uh, but 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 once you once you did the work and you actually and the other thing is being coachable too. It's hmm. like I remember you and I talking about um, like what was the biggest change for you that ultimately got you the result and you said you know, before you just like wanted to answer, and you touched on this earlier, you wanted to answer like all the behavioral questions the way you wanted to do it. Yeah. That's how you've always done it. And it's almost like there's a little bit of resistance to using the frameworks that we're teaching you and asking you to use. And honestly, the frameworks that we teach our clients, um, it's not a script, right? Because everyone's going to have a different story. Yeah. But it is a, it's a framework as in like there's a structure for how we want to structure your answers is almost like you said, it's like fill in the blanks, right? Yeah, exactly. But like, we didn't just come up with those frameworks randomly. And mm -hmm. I didn't come up with those frameworks myself. It's, it's like actually from a lot of trial and error, seeing so many candidates go through this process and having just this pattern recognition around, hey, we've seen hundreds of different candidates and how they answer these questions. We also know who ended up going where and mm -hmm what type of answers tended to get the best results and what type of answers didn't really work. Yeah. And then kind of like taking the, all the commonalities from the most successful answers and then seeing like, Hey, what are the similarities? And then turning that into almost like a formula that you can use. Right. Exactly. Cause it's not, this is not rocket science. Mm -hmm. Once you figure out the formula, like it's plug and play. Just like you say, you just, all you did was you plugged in your own stories and your own. Stories. Yeah, facts. exactly. And then I don't think we even had to like do another mock interview or whatever after that. That was the only mock interview you and I did. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that was true. <laughs> yeah, we didn't do any other mock interview after that because I just, um, I remember when we did the mock and I, I just took all those notes like, okay, the three points, like, you know, each question just try to come up with like three, three main answers that you yeah. want to like kind of explain. Yeah. And then there's just dropping the spark formula there. Okay, what are you trying to explain? You know, yeah. what are the actions? You know, what you know, what did you learn from it? What's the takeaway, right? Yeah. And I remember that takeaway is one key part that I never heard. I right. never had I never had that takeaway at right. all. Like I never used to like include that in my answers, but it's actually key where you're like, okay, this is what I took from it and this is how we could apply it to banking, right? That that was one huge thing I took from it. I was like, oh, okay, okay. I could see how someone would like this answer. It's really funny that you mentioned that because the one thing that everyone's all heard of is the STAR method, right? Yeah. Everyone learns the STAR method and they probably even teach a STAR method in business school and whatever. Um, and then, so this Spark outline is like, just like our own twist on yeah. that framework. But mm -hmm. like, in my opinion, it's like the new and improved version right I'll start, I'll start, always yeah. say like oh like what what could you possibly learn inside of wall street mastermind that's not already out there it's like no we do try to come up with our own proprietary things i'm not saying it's like huge wholesale changes because you don't need to do that mm -hmm. a lot of times it's like the minor refinements and the small improvements in the margins that can make the, a huge difference right? exactly exactly yeah yeah, it did. Yeah, it kind of like, like, like you said, like the, the takeaway kind of like just wraps everything up, like for almost every one of those answers. Like, okay, this is what I take away from, you know, from it. This is what I took away from my experience. This is what I took away from, you know, my strength, you know, how I worked on my strength. This is how I could apply to banking. And yeah. those are the things that just kind of like uh, I just saw and I was like, oh, wow, I can see how I can use this well now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, when I'm speaking to people and and it's just been like it's just been like a whole revelation since then because I've been <laughs> using it and it's been so successful. Yeah. And uh and yeah, and you know, I kind of like texted you immediately after, like, wait, Sam, I, I, I used your formula and it now makes it makes sense to me. Like, you know, it giving positive results and things like that. So 
And the thing is, you learned it now, and yeah. you can use this for the rest of your career. Yeah. I know our goal was to get you into investment banking, but Word. this will most likely not be the last time you ever go through a job interview or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. And so all of these things that you learn are th these are just life skills. Like it's yeah. applicable forever, right? And exactly. that's super valuable. Um, but I'm I'm super glad that we did talk that one time and had that mock interview where. I kind of like broke things down for you because this is why I love doing what I do is like when you, when, when someone has that light bulb moment and you can see it go off for them and it clicks mm -hmm. and then everything makes sense yep. and it just completely changes things for them. 180. Like that's very gratifying for me as a coach, because I'm like, ah, okay. Okay. Like, <laughs> nice. We really, we really made a difference here. And, and so that's, that's amazing. I, I I'm really appreciative that you shared um, that feedback with me. Um, I guess, let me ask you, so obviously for full-time recruiting, um, most of the time in my experience, especially at the MBA level, yeah, it's really, really hard to get a full-time offer. And I think I even told you this back then. It's yeah, really, really hard me. to get a full-time offer if you don't have a summer internship at these banks, because the banks are very hesitant to hire someone that's kind of like I said, on this partner track position, yeah. when they don't really know you that like all they know is like from one or two interviews, as opposed to an internship over the summer, they get to observe you for 10 weeks. Yeah. Right? And they actually know if you're good or not. So like, how was your experience going through full time recruiting? Like, how are you able to, I guess, get the interview in the first place when you didn't really intern at a bank over the summer? And did that ever come up during your interview process where they kind of questioned you about why you didn't do banking over the summer. And if so, like, how did you overcome that? Yeah. So, and, and this, and this is another thing that I kind of took from wall street masterminds, right. Uh, it, it's, I kind of like went back to the networking model. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. When I got my, I, cause I, I did a private equity uh, internship for like a, a, a smaller private equity firm in San Diego um, owned by, it was started by UCLA and two, and so it's, they have three partners, two USC alums and one UCLA alum. So it was kind of like easier for me to get in just because of the school affiliation, but also because of, of my private equity um, background. And so I was able to get in there working on deals. Like I, I, there was no sugar, there was no like practice for me. They literally just threw me in the fire. Like, hey, you know, look at this deal, look at this company, do some research on it investment yeah. memo look for comps and everything like that and it's like it's pretty much things that you do in banking only that the difference here is like you're actually trying to help the comp the the private equity firm invest right yeah. but the skill set is pretty much almost the same yeah what you're doing uh so when that started i said you know this is a good leverage this is going to be a good leverage for me i could talk to banks because uh, the, the position was never going to it wasn't going to be permanent just next one for the summer yeah. and it just happened to work out and I just started reaching out again. You know, I went back to the networking model, right? I remember the Google, if you remember the Google engine search thing that you kind of yeah. like, but I still have that tool. I yeah. look up like the, I look up bankers in a certain region that I'm focusing on. Yeah. I look up their names, uh, sh I'll shoot out the code email. Hey, you know, um, I'm a student of USC, you know, interested in banking. This is what I'm currently doing for the summer. Yeah. Um, I'll be hope you know, if there's any full-time opportunity in your, you know, in your, your team or the, the bank that you know about, I'll be willing to explore it. And I just started like, you know, kind of like sending those kind of emails out, uh, yeah. got, got through to some recruiters. I had calls with probably about four or five recruiters in just like one week. Wow. And they were like, Oh, we'll keep you in the pipeline. Don't worry. Um, then I, re I saw an application for Guggenheim as well. Yeah. And I was like, I'm just going to throw my resume in there. And yeah. they reached out to me immediately. And this is the same Guggenheim that I was applying to. Like when I wanted to get the summer, summer uh, internship, they didn't even give me a phase. They didn't, I didn't get an interview with them. Like yeah. they just, they, they, they came back to me and you know, gave me an interview. And when they gave me the interview, for some reason, I just, I just felt this energy like this is yours. <laughs> Kill. But I don't know why I felt that. Yeah. I felt the energy that, you know, this is yours. Like this is what you're looking for. Yeah. And I had already spoken to an associate there back in December. It was a cool guy. 
spoke to him. He told me about the firm. Then I just reached out to him like, hey, I just got this interview and it's going to happen in like four days. Yeah. You know, I just wanted to kind of like speak to you again, reconnect to see, you know, what the bank is all about because we haven't spoken in a while and mm -hmm. what I should be expecting, you know. And he just told me, you know, just know your technicals, you know, know why you're choosing Guggenheim. And, you know, through the Wall Street Mastermind um, models, you kind of like know, okay, why this bank, right? You have to look up the bank, what deals they've worked on, what differentiate them from like other banks. Mm -hmm. And he kind of like just dropped some in there for me. And I just went back to the framework and I just dropped my, I just dropped what he told me into my answers and just looked at it like, okay, um, you know, this is why Guggenheim, you know, I just had to drop it into into the model I already have. Cause I have, I have this answers typed out already. Right. Right. It's just kind of like just refining it for which bank I'm interviewing for. Yeah. And I just looked at it one time, like, yeah, I know what to say already. I didn't even need to read it. <laughs> I kind of like know what to say. Yeah. And, you know, the interview happened and, my technicals it was first the first round was just technicals i was able to get through that and the second round was pretty much talking to a vp the last round was talking to an md all on the same day mm -hmm. and the questions the vp and md was asking me like oh why are you leaving private equities uh, to banking like that's the place people want to go and i told i made them understand like the banking is actually what i'm after you know i and also my private equity opportunities just for the summer and things like that and they were able to see it but what they really what they really went deep on is okay what did you do during your experience at your mm -hmm. PE shop and you know i gave them a, you know a breakdown of what i do on a day on a daily basis you know looking at deals yeah. i mean uh, i'm also in the investment committee calls with the partners which was kind of like great experience exposure for me yeah. uh, kind of seeing how they're thinking about things um, regarding so many different um, industries that they invest into, which was like consumer retail, yeah. uh, technology, and healthcare. And um, I kind of, then I remember the MD asked me, okay, how do they source their deals? Which I knew about, you know, most of them had just had like their own network of how they source deals, right. or they have firms that they've invested into like earlier in the stage of their their careers where they knew people from those firms that would kind of like refer another firm if they want to raise fund like hey i think you should speak to certain guys you know they'll probably you know be able to like raise your fund uh because the, the the firm i worked for focused on growth equity so they're still like late stage venture yeah. uh kind of like almost approaching ipo or strategic acquisitions that's yeah. where they kind of like that's their niche area where they they provide liquidity to a yeah. lot of early investors and employees that, you know, had shares right. early in the stage of many of these companies. And, you know, I was able to like, kind of like break my experience down, what I learned from there. And they, you know, I just made them see it like, look, I've been doing this. I know it, I understand it. And the offer just happened from there. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome, man. Um, I mean, it sounds like in the end, you were just, super prepared yep. super confident you went back to the modules whether it's on the technicals the behaviorals the networking like everything you needed was already there and anytime you needed something you just had to go back and yep. take whatever it is that you need go and apply it and then you will get the results that you wanted yeah right? that sounds like that was pretty much it so exactly uh, we might be making it sound too easy i don't know but <laughs> oh I, I, trust me it's not it's not easy you really gotta <laughs> sit down and do the work yeah. Like kind of question yourself and speak to yourself about yourself. Yeah. To be able to get yeah, something like that. No, because like I want to emphasize it's not easy, right? Because like anytime you make it sound too easy, you're like, oh, this this is not real. Or it's like it's not easy at all. There's nothing easy about breaking into investment banking. If it was easy, yeah, then everybody would already be in. Right? Yep. Like exactly. everybody would be making multiple six figures a year. And it's like, no, it's like nothing good comes easy. But um but that's amazing. Like, obviously, Guggenheim, phenomenal bank, like Elite Boutique. They do some really, really great deals. Yep. And so super excited for you that uh, you ultimately were able to get an offer there. And obviously, I think it's well-deserved. Yep. Um, I guess, like, one last question for you before we wrap up would just be, do you have, like, if you can only give one piece of advice to maybe, let's say, incoming MBA students yep. who are going to business school with the intention of making a career switch into banking yeah. like what's something that you wish someone had told you back when you were first starting out in this process that maybe would have saved you 
there's a lot of time and effort and just, I don't know. So maybe some, even something, if you could go back, you would redo certain things differently. Like, is there anything like that that you want to share with people? Yeah, I, I'll say probably um, it's like definitely get a formula of like, get your preparation formula like in check, like know that, okay, yeah, you're going into the business school and the business school can get you connected with like most of the banks and stuff. And they, they might have some certain programs like with some of the clubs that we have on campus that will try to expose you to certain things. But you have to remember that every other person in the program is also trying to do the same thing, right? So try to look for a differentiating like kind of like formula, you know, to, to get to where you're trying to get to. Like you can know so much but you know me reaching out to someone like sam right who has been there and done that just kind of like framed it well for me like hey you know yeah i could see the founder questions for example and read all the answers there but do i really understand it do i know how to convey it right do i know how to get it across um it's like just get you get your form your, your studying formula your prep formula in check you know seek out help where you're supposed to seek out help if you know you're not sure if you know it's going to be beneficial for you. And in this case, you know, you're trying to get into banking. I feel like there's no better investment that you can make than getting that. Like Sam said, there's no, you can't get too much help for getting into banking, to be honest. And I remember when you told me, Sam, like, oh, you're like, oh, you don't want to spend this money now, but just think about the return on investment, right. you know, when this happens for you. And in my head, I was like, but what if I don't get it? Right. right. <laughs> That's what I was just thinking. What if I don't get it? And this money just goes. But now just looking at what I actually the, the step I actually took then. Right. It was like, wow, it was worth it. I'm, you know, I'm glad you actually told me. Like, just look at the return on investment if you get it. Well, because what I always try to remind people is like they always think about the upfront cost yeah. of hiring someone like Wall Street Mastermind or you know, like a lot of people, when they apply to business school, they hire um, like admissions consultants, like former admissions officers who help you with your application and stuff. This is kind of similar, except it's for yeah. investment banking. Right? Exactly. It's like, yep. People think about the cost there, but like, what's the cost of not getting into the top business school? Or what's mm -hmm. the cost of not getting that banking job that you want and then having to settle for maybe like a lesser job, right? Yeah. Like what, what's the pay cut you would have to take? Like, it's going to end up costing you either way if yeah, you get exactly. an inferior outcome. And it just depends on, do you want to pay a little bit up front or do you want to pay a lot later on? Right? Exactly. Yeah, that's um, true. And yeah, obviously like if you don't want to pay for stuff, that's not going to give you any incremental improvement in the outcome. But if you do pay for something that does end up giving you an incremental improvement in the outcome that you get, whether that's, the difference between not getting into banking at all to get into banking, or maybe it's the difference between maybe you could have gotten into banking on your own, but you could have gotten into an even bigger or better bank mm -hmm. that pays more and has is more prestigious and has better exit opportunities and better network and works on bigger deals. Like that's worth a lot too, right? Exactly. Um, in the long run for your career. So I just always encourage people to think long term um, and you know be business minded and have an investor's mindset. Yeah, that's the investment you can really make is an investment in yourself. Yourself, yeah, word. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I agree. I agree with that. And, and yeah, I was kind of glad I actually made that decision then because it's just, you know, like what, what would have happened if I didn't actually have Wall Street Mastermind? Because when I did not get the summer, uh, the summer offer, like by December, I probably would have like just started focusing on something else. You Go know, I kind of like just maybe exactly i i i, I kind of like just went back like wait I, I need to like just see what is wrong because i like i said i understood the technical so well yeah. but and I, and I was like you know i spoke there's some mds i actually spoke to like during like the coffee chats yeah and they were like we know you we know you're gonna be you know we know you are someone that will fit into banking right i just couldn't get through the interview phase so that just kept like leaving a question in my mind like there's something missing Right. Because I know people, people saw the potential in me, yeah. but for some reason, I just couldn't get through the interviews and, you know, just going back and mm -hmm. just going through that formula and just like, kind of like repeating it to myself, just kind of like just frame everything for me. Oh, okay. Now I know what they want to hear. 
now I, now I know how to sell myself because one, one of my weakest things is I don't really know how to sell myself. I like to like keep to myself. I don't brag or anything like that. So so this, this kind of like gave me a better way to sell myself. You know, yeah. I'm like using that model and formula, and, and I'm just glad it kind of worked out. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's amazing, man. Um, this is a really great story. I'm so glad we got to share with everyone. Um, yeah. For those of you out there who are listening to this. Uh, If you are currently an MBA student or maybe you're an incoming MBA student and your goal is to break into investment banking and you've already made the decision to invest all this time and effort and money to go back to business school, you're spending multiple six figures. um, Do not, do not give this anything less than your best shot, right? That would be my advice to you. So if you want that help from Wall Street Mastermind, if you want us to kind of guide you through this process, teach you kind of all the frameworks that we talk to do, whether it's networking, whether it's behaviorals, whether it's technicals, yep. um, and really just be there for you and answer whatever questions you might have along the way. Um, reach out to us. You know, you can book a free strategy session with us. It's like a free initial consultation, basically, mm-hmm. uh, just by going to www.wallstreetmastermind.com slash apply. Uh, the street's abbreviated to ST, so it's wallstmastermind.com slash apply. And uh, we'll get on a, a quick call, you know, 30, 45 minutes tops. We'll ask you some questions about what your goals are and what challenges you're currently having and what it is that you feel like you need help with. And based on that, we'll let you know if we can help you or not. And if we can't help you, what that might look like, right? And then you can decide if it makes sense for you or not, right? And if it doesn't, all good, no worries. You can take whatever advice we give you and go out and try to implement it on your own as well, right? But other than that, like, Caduce, I want to thank you for taking the time to talk to us. No problem. And uh, obviously, it's been really fun working with you uh, over the last, I guess it's been 13 months now. Yeah. Time flies. <laughs> but, uh, and a lot has happened. But it's great to just see how far you've come and just like how much more confident you are now. And you're just, you know, going in and crushing these interviews. And that's amazing. Right. Yeah. And um, can't wait to see all the success that you have in banking. Um Thanks as an associate and beyond. And, uh, you know, we look forward to obviously staying in touch with you and uh, kind of continuing this relationship down the road because everyone yeah, that joins Wall Street Mastermind, we always tell them, like, you're part of the family, right? Yeah, so, exactly, exactly. Yeah, that, that's a fact. Like, uh, you can, like, reach out to people in the in the pack, right? We call it a pack. Yeah. You know, I spoke, I spoke <laughs> to some undergrad who actually – like they actually explain certain things to me too, you know, like, Hey, when you went to your interview out, you know, what, what did you go through? Like that was another, that was another great, um, great um, part of being part of like the entire team is that, you know, you have people that have actually gone through the interviews before that you can ask questions and right. they're like, Oh, this certain person will ask you this sort of questions. Like just watch yeah. out for that, you know? Yeah. And this is some of the, kind of like the synergy you get by joining Wall Street Mastermind. You know, I really love it. The community is really powerful and yeah. it's only becoming more and more powerful over time. Yeah. Um, especially as people like you continue to place into these top banks. Like we now have alumni at every single both track and elite boutique bank out there. Right. Yeah. So it's like, that's a really great network to be a part of. Absolutely correct. And, uh, we look forward to having you as a part of that as well going forward. Um, All right. Thank so, you, Sam. Yeah, absolutely. Guys, thank you for tuning in. We're going to wrap this up here. All right. We'll be back with more of these for you guys in the near future. So stay tuned and uh, we'll talk to you soon. All right. Uh, have a great night. Bye. All right.